Music Copyright, Part 3. So now that we've covered the musical composition copyright and its royalties, let's talk about the sound recording itself. To review, within the world of music copyright, there is a separate copyright for the musical composition and the sound recording. You'd think these copyrights might work in similar ways, but they're actually pretty different. Let's start with a little bit of history to understand how. Musical compositions have been protected since the 1800s, but sound recordings have only been protected since 1972. Copyright law has changed many times since the first U.S. copyright law in 1790. When musical compositions were first eligible for copyright protection in 1831, we didn't have radio, cassettes, or MP3s. It wasn't until the Digital Performance Right and the Sound Recordings Act were passed in 1995 that musicians could receive performance royalties for their sound recordings. Today, in accordance with these laws, a musician like Sam Singer can obtain his royalties for the sound recording by registering with Sound Exchange, a digital performance rights organization. Performances on internet radio stations like Pandora or satellite services like Sirius XM would be licensed by Sound Exchange, and Sam would be paid accordingly. Just like ASCAP and BMI, Sound Exchange provides blanket licenses and keeps track of what royalties you're owed when your music is played on streaming services like the ones we mentioned earlier. Sam Singer also gets paid when his song, Copywritings on the Wall, is sold through services like iTunes or Bandcamp, or on CD or vinyl. If Sam Singer released his single with a record label and not independently, his label might own the copyright and Sam would only be paid a portion of those sales. When you decide to work with a record label, it's important to read the small print in that record deal. And with that, we wrap up the sound recording copyright. While these different types of music copyrights are obtained automatically, getting compensated for them is not. It requires a lot of legwork to ensure you can collect the royalties you are eligible for when your music is performed, played, or sold. In our video about music compositions, we mentioned that there can be benefits to using aggregator services like CD Baby or TuneCore. These services can assist in navigating the realm of music copyright, ensuring that you get the royalties you deserve for your music. Thanks for tuning in. Now get out there and make some music!